uh, 8 inch 3 plate master frame. We're going to go through uh, disassembly of the frame to load in your round main inserts for your particular job and show you all the necessary parts that we have to put in. In order to separate this frame because of the caution spring loaded between the uh, triple plate, um, we're going to put clamps on and bar clamp it up to remove the pressure on the screws so we can take them off the safety. Off and holding it up. Now go ahead and separate the two halves. And notice how the shoulder bolts pulled this up, so now we need to remove these to separate the two halves in order to load the mold in. So basically, do that just by removing the four stripper bolt that attaches the eight of the beam. This is a fitted insert box that the mold is actually in, and we're going to take it, flip it around, and, and get the mold out, separate it, and get it ready to put it in the frame. Because of the weight of the 8 inch insert, it's best to go ahead and bring the top down. Unlatch it. Then we're just going to turn around and roll the frame out onto the cushion lid. Now we're ready to actually set it up on the table and separate the two halves. We're basically setting it up and standing on the support belt. Because we have to show some more. Move the safety straps. locating notch which actually takes you from uh, putting the mold in upside down. When you frame, you got to lift the retainers and you need to make sure they're oriented correctly in order to slide the insert into place. As of right now this was turned, the notch should be uh, 90 degrees from the, from the diameter and then of course they need to be flush on the bottom side so obviously this one's out, we're going to screw it in and then we're going to rotate it to where it's flat, parallel with the diameter go in, and it's also flat on the bottom. So now I'm ready to go ahead to, to make sure that it's ready. You know, we're going to go ahead and make sure we're going to check all the bottoms to make sure they're flush with the bore. And then make sure they're all parallel with just without. You know, we're going to go ahead and roll them around to where they're parallel, and then we're going to make sure every one of them is the same direction. In the frame, if you look, our idiot dowel is at the top side. Now that's how the insert goes in, and I've got my dowel slot located towards the top, flats it to the keys. We're going to go ahead and proceed and put it in place. Okay, first of all, you got to engage all the, the notches on the lift retainers. So I can't, that one turns in, no problem. I go ahead and lock all these in place first. Sometimes you got to back them off a little bit, just depending on where they're at. Now you got two wrenches, and you always want to take them in even. And after that, I just go around and snug each individual one. You don't need a whole lot of force on it about what you put on a T-handle, and that's all. Ready to go to the inside. There it goes, go through the process again, checking my flat of all my lifter retainers to make sure they're in place and down all the way. Make sure the diameters are smooth so it allows me to slide the insert in place. And also, you want to make sure that you've got your ejector retainer knock out block screwed out so that I can actually load that into as well. And see the B side screw in my hanging screws, or my lifting screws I put it in. I'm going to bring it down. Knowing that my notch needs to be laid up, up. I'm going 
So I put that in place, now I'm ready to go over the front end. Now I actually lift the up and grab the hold of the extra support, take some weight off to get the ejector bed started in place. Now I'm going to come back to my left hand hole. I'm going to go ahead and put it up in place. Slide that I'm going to remove my lifting screws out of the way and then I'm going to go and proceed and lock in the uh, ejector retainers. Here again, when it's 90 degrees, it's not in a locked position. Bring it in to where I can actually lock this one in. I'm going to go 180 degrees from that and I'm going to lock that one in. Now I'm going to go ahead and snug these two up right now. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the other two. Now notice that the notch is now running 90 degrees from your insert and that tells you that it's locked in and that's why we machine our wrench that way to where you got unlock to lock. Now we'll go ahead and snug these down. Okay. So I'm basically done with them right now, but now you can tell I've got return pins out. Okay, so I've got to make sure that the ejector plate's in all the way. And the easiest is just reach back in there and pop it. Now the return pins went away. So now we need to lock in our ejector retainers on the bottom end of the frame. And you can do this with one wrench. Just bring it in to where it's just lightly stuck. Turn the frame around. I'll do your second. Because there is working clearance in there and you want to just kind of make it as even as possible. Just a light snug air. Bring it back over. Light snug air and that's basically it. For your individual frame, for your mold, you've actually got a half inch standing arm up on the side of the parking lot. So in order to use this, we need to put return pin extensions that makes up that inch gap that we and that's that Just a bench alignment dowels to put in there and they're longer than the core just to help so that when we go to put this together we don't damage the core in any shape. Yeah, Start to put it together, come on. Now, the standard left shoulder bolt, it actually goes in and it's through in here and bottom out. Like so, and when I separate this out, that's as far as I can open it up. And as you can tell right now, there's a part going in here and it's tall, but then if you know it goes down in there, you're not going to be able to get the part out of the mold. So in this particular case, we need to add extensions to these shoulder bolts that allows our A and B to separate further. And now we have made special shoulder bolt extensions that we're going to put in, in place. We'll screw these in. Same token, I'm going to go ahead and torque them down nice and tight so they're secure. And instead of using the regular uh, round link tools that come with the frame, I'm going to use my own L wrench and my 7 16 wrench again, and I'm going to torque them down until they're good and tight.
like this, we're going to go ahead and demonstrate the full open position. That's with everything stripped out. Everything pulled apart from the shoulder bolts. This is your maximum mold opening that you'll need to set to your press. And as you can tell, now we've got plenty of room to get the part off. If I go ahead and, and bring my jackers up, there's maximum stroke. You see the part is going to be hanging in place. So now you need to make sure that you tie in the ejector system by using the three and a half inch center or whatever your frame is by rotating the blocks, but you need to tie them in on the outside knockout blocks. Fresh grease in the leader pin holes too, or the bushing holes as well. But by doing this on the bench, with us already having our shoulder bolts in place, you have to watch that when I start sliding this together, how close these are going to come back. And if you got your hands up here the wrong way, you're going to pinch it right here, and you'll see that when I get it close. basically closed all the way and see if I had my finger in there there's no way that I'm going to get that it's going to pinch it. so you want to be aware of that now you can tell at this plate you know the party line is closed by looking at it because it's close together the return pin extensions are, are contacting the return pins but you still have a gap here where your spring load tension is and in order to shut that you actually have to put a clamp on it just like we did when we unclamped it so that we can put that together. We're getting ready to put all our safety strap in. And in order to do that, we have to take the clamp out the spring bar. But when you can notice the first one, we have two eye bolts here that actually clamp this up with no parting line gap at all. But since how that we've got a half inch on each side, so we need an inch, we went ahead and, and made up a special strap to where you can actually move the screw out to this here. Now we can clamp it up and be clamped in place with your now the mold's completely clamped up, all the gaps are gone, we're ready to put on the safety strap. Right now if you wanted to remove these shoulder bolts with the clamped in press, you couldn't do that because you've got only about 900,000 clearance here from the back. So, Basically, we're going to show you how that you can actually uh, get rid of your bars and clamps here for uh, getting access to it. In the so now we're going to remove the shoulder bolts. I use a 7 16th wrench. That way we don't separate them between. Now I'm going to remove the four screws and hold this actuator bar in place. And I'm going to use regular L wrench. We snug these up pretty tight, so we're better off using L wrench. We put these on the slip tip down. We can pull the actuator bar off, get it out of the room, and get some butter in to get in there to do what you need if you got some other alterations to do the mold at, at any point in time. Okay, now we're actually shipping you this mold in the frame. Uh, everything's in place, ready for you just to put it in the press. And basically, this is our recommendation for lifting it up and putting it in place using two eye bolts, one in the A and one in the support plate. And that way when you pick it up and put pressure on it, now it's hanging nice and even so it's a lot easier for you to line up in your press ready to go.